Enjoy the holiday season with the ultra Alolan festivities design. Available on hoodies, notebooks, mugs even. Get one for yourself to wrap up nice and warm or one for a friend and links to where you can get your own are in the description below. Hey Pokemon Masters, Birdkeeper Toby here, and what if I was a gym leader in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Oh, we kind of covered that topic already. What if I was a trial captain? They don't even have gyms. Oh wait, I covered that topic too. Okay, what if I was, uh, have my own Pokemon League? Oh no, I did that as well. Okay, what if I was the evil team leader? Oh, I did that as well. In fact, between these and a video with my own region or fake mon of mine, I'm beginning to create a network of videos that I absolutely love to make. I've actually worked out that there's a chronology joining all of these events up, as well as the event of me being Bird Keeper Toby in the Johto region. These things are all part of one story, me as an NPC in the world of Pokemon. The me that was a gym leader or a trial captain or a champion or an evil team, team snooze, all of that is all part of one big chronology, which I am going to share with you a little bit more of today. The period of time in which I, Birdkeeper Toby, ran a battle facility, or rather a battle frontier with lots of facilities. What are those facilities? What is my battle frontier? How will you conquer them? That is of course the question of today's video and as always I want you to be creative in the comments or make your own videos. What would it be like if you had a battle frontier? The battle frontier by the way, a feature that appeared in Pokemon Emerald as well as in, in Pokemon Diamond Pearl, Platinum, I think Hard God, Soul Silver. These battle facilities are usually post game areas where you encounter really strong Pokemon, sometimes legends. Legendary Pokemon. Emerald is definitely the most famous one, but the Battle Tower is at least one facility that's appeared since Pokemon Crystal. So it's pretty embedded in the world of Pokemon. The most recent incarnation, I suppose, is the Battle Tree in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I'm not sure what's coming out in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Hopefully a few more facilities would be kind of cool. And we have some artwork, thanks to the fantastic artist that is the Mouse Alchemist of an island. This island is actually one you visited before in the My Island Trial video. It's an island that exists within the world of the Pokemon world that I made as a map. As to where, you will have to wait and see as we make more of these videos stringing together the chronology, but there is an island. It used to be a trial site and now I have revisited there many years later as a more accomplished trainer and set up a battle frontier. Lots of battle facilities representing different cool things in the world of Pokemon, some of which have to do with my channel and have to do with a number of other things we've done. And you as a trainer, you've gone off on your journey, you've got your eight badges or defeating all the island trials, whatever region it is, and you've been approached by a curly haired guy with glasses. No, it's not Scott, it's me. Sorry, Scott. And I've been watching you. Not in a weird or creepy way, although Scott does kind of follow you around a little bit too closely. Hmm. But I've been noticing your feats as a trainer and invite you to take your ship from whatever region you're in to my battle frontier. And here you're going to face some of the toughest challenges you've ever faced. Coming off the dock immediately, you have three directions you can go. Forward, left, or right. Forward will take you to the Battle Dome. The first facility you're expected to encounter. And here, the battle style. The battle style are one-on-one -on -one battles. And as you enter the dome, you realize it's just a giant tent where there's 24 Team Snooze grunts napping on the floor. Ex-Team Snooze. Team Snooze isn't a real organization anymore. It's actually become kind of a meme in the Pokemon world. And, uh, well, Team Snooze grunts, they nap here. They're some of the strongest. And they all use Team Snooze-related Pokemon. I'm talking Snorlaxes, Drowsy, Swablu's, and Altarius, Slacking, any Pokemon associated ever with Team Snooze, these grunts are going to use. And as you battle through the 24 grunts, you're going to get a battle point each time you beat them. Oh, and by the way, who are these grunts? Um, they're you, of course. Any of you who signed up to be a Team Snooze grunt in the My Evil Team videos, they will be made up of whatever teams you think you have. If you're not the person taking on this frontier. Also, all of the community managers that are part of the channel, Kalula Cosplays, Joey Pals, Lady Liz, these three are Team Snooze higher-ups that will definitely be appearing in your little, little battles here. And then on your 25th battle, so that you can get the battle symbol because yeah, I'm bringing back battle symbols. But the head of this division of Team Snooze at the moment is Catelyn, a previous Elite Four member and member that I made one of my champions. She uses sleepy Pokemon and she will be your final test as the frontier brain of this facility. She's actually been a frontier brain before, kind of. It was actually her castle valet, Drac, who was the uh, frontier brain who just battled on her behalf, which is really, really weird. But here she is a battle frontier brain for herself and once you've, you know, woken her up with these 24 other battles, it's all a bit noisy. She gets up, she battles you with her psychic Pokemon and then of course you beat her, get the symbol and head back out. Heading out of the battle arena, you can go to the facility that was east of you. This is the Battle Arcade. Back when I did the My Pokemon Gyms video, uh, people got really creative making their own gyms, and I recommend you watch the video over on Noggin, Lockston's channel, uh, about his Pokemon Gym. The idea was it was an arcade, and you'd battle the arcade machine, and inside you'd be battling Porygons and Rotoms that would turn the Pokemon into like their 
classic red and blue versions. I love the idea that it's this busy arcade where loads of the island locals are playing games, but there's this one arcade machine that no one is touching. You interact with it and it asks, are you sure? And here you enter one long battle where you are up against 50 Pokemon in a row. They start at a relatively low level. The first 25 of them are all Porygon. The next 19 are Porygon 2. The next four are Porygon Z, and the next one, the final one, is Rotom. You have to beat all of these relatively low-level Porygon in a row. It's kind of like when you battle the Polygons in Smash Bros. It's a nice little reference to that, and it's all in the style of red and blue. Of course, you finish, the, the, the arcade machine shuts down, and then you get approached by the Frontier Brain, who is Noggin, Loxton, a also previous member of Team Snooze. And he challenges you to a battle where you will battle uh, in double battles, against his Porygon, Porygon 2, Porygon Z, and Rotom. And once you defeat them all, that is when you get your battle symbol. Just a kind of fun, I like. I just like the idea of that. It's just like a fun extra. And also having to battle 50 Pokemon in a row in and of, and of itself is gonna be something you're gonna have to get a lot of strategy behind. Just surviving that long. Next, you're out of the facility and you can head west to the battle forest. And by the way, can I just say, I love the little details that Mouse Alchemist has put on the map. There's like a little letter bear in the tree. There's all sorts of Pokemon all over. I want to show off as much of this map as possible in this in this video. But you have the Battle Forest, a facility. It is just a pathway that you can travel through to the rest of the island. However, if you approach the artist who is sketching in the forest, this mysterious artist will say, oh, would you like to take on the Battle Forest? This is Mina. And Mina is a frontier brain. And in her trial, you're going to have to battle 25 totem Pokemon in a row. They're grabbed from an assortment of 100 other Pokemon that you might find living in the forest, and it's just at random, but you're going to battle 25 totem Pokemon in a row. Don't worry, you'll get to heal up between battles. And of course, it is a double battle because they can SOS call in any of the other Pokemon. And once you've beaten them, you're going to do battle number 26, which is against Mina and her totem Shinotic. And of course, these totem Pokemon are going to get progressively stronger and harder, so be on the lookout. You get your third battle symbol and keep on heading to the west of the island. Here you have a couple options. The first one I'm going to recommend you take on is the Battle Drake. Now I loved the Battle Pike in Hoenn. The idea that there was a facility that just looked like Surviper. Well, the Battle Drake is kind of the same. It just, it's one giant Gyarados. It's a boat, kind of like those that you'd find in Seafolk Village. And in the back of the boat is an entrance where mini Magikarp boats dock. Also, the Gyarados is shiny, obviously. Because why wouldn't it be a red Gyarados? Anyway, you're inside the Battle Drake and the, the the idea behind the Battle Drake is that each battle is a little Magikarp boat coming into the Gyarados boat, bringing a trainer, then that goes off into the waters and, and a new opponent comes in, and you're battling only dragon or dragon themed Pokemon. This is all in double battles. The catch here is that you can't use any ice or fairy type Pokemon, so the only a type advantage Pokemon you can use here are dragon types. That's the rule. Only dragon type Pokemon is your type advantage Pokemon. Other than that, no ice, no fairy types. You can still use Pokemon with ice and fairy moves, which is gonna be what you're gonna have to plan to take on this facility. And after 24 fights in the battle Drake, you're gonna take on Drake for a battle. Drake is an elite four member from Hoenn and also the character that brought you to the island back in the My Island trial videos. He was the only one who could even locate this island in all the fog and mist it was under. This seafaring captain has known the location of this island for a while and he is going to be the frontier brain for your fourth symbol. Now there are a total of six symbols that allow you to get to the final facility and so the next two that you're going to have to take on you can take on in any order. I mean you can take any of them on in any order but there is a recommended order. First up are the double battles of the regular battle tower. The battle tower is a staple of any battle frontier. And because it's double battles and I think the character needs more love, the character at the top of the battle tower is Wes from Pokemon Colosseum, a double battle Pokemon expert who uses his Espeon and Umbreon of course, as well as the Shadow Tyranitar he got at the end of the game and the Ho-Oh he got for completing everything. Yes, this is where we start introducing legendary Pokemon because right next to the battle tower is the battle ruins, a battle tower that goes underground. These ruins are for single battles and you have to complete the same amount of battles to descend floors and get down to the bottom floor where your battle Spencer. Again, a character that I mentioned in the My Champion video, now a Battle Frontier member here. He was actually a Frontier Brain, of course, in Emerald as well. And the catch about this place is that all Pokemon in it are either ancient Pokemon or legendary Pokemon or Pokemon with some special lore around them. The Battle Ruins, you're gonna be encountering more legendary Pokemon than any other facility. So that's incredible. Once you've got your symbols, you can now go up the spire-like mountain that you previously ascended in the My Island Trial video. This is at the very back of the island and you can use a cable car to get up there. And at the top is the battle tree. I greet you at the bottom of the battle tree and say congratulations, you've made it this far. It's been incredible that you've battled this many interesting trainers and battled and, and faced every challenge as it's come to you. Now, the battle tree. Double battles or single battles, up to you. And there are 50 individual roosts on the battle tree with the nest 
at the very, very top. Half the way up, you're going to be battling Faulkner, another previous Elite Four member of mine when I was a champion, a bird type Pokemon expert who has come to me to train. He mentions that he was one of the first gym leaders that Bird Keeper Toby ever took on, and he uses the three legendary birds and, if it's in double battles, a Pidgeot as well. Anyway, you're only halfway up and you're going to keep on battling other trainers who have a number of different Pokemon, and as you get close to round 50, the battles get harder and harder and harder, but you make it because you are incredible. Pokemon Master, you are ready for this fight. And these battles are only gonna get harder and harder and harder, but as you get up to the 50th spot, the nest at the top, you finally encounter Bird Keeper Toby. And I'm ready to give you the challenge of your life. This is probably one of the final stages in the chronology of Bird Keeper Toby. There is more after this. And that's all we're gonna be talking about in future videos. But Bird Keeper Toby is no longer a member of Team Snooze. It's been a long time since I was the head of Team Snooze. Now I'm just back to doing what I know being a bird keeper, but that doesn't mean you're just going to use electric types and beat me because I got a powerful team. If it's a single battle, then you're going to start off battling my Porygon Z. Not a bird Pokemon, I know. Only it is. Porygon 2 is kind of based off of a bird, and also I love Porygon Z since my new video where I was talking about Porygon Z battling the Ultra Beast, so it's become part of my team. Also, it was part of the team I used as a champion, so, you know, we got some consistency. Porygon Z up first. Next up is Pidgeot, or rather Mega Pidgeot, my first mascot of this channel. A tough opponent to beat, but probably the easiest that you're gonna get through as you get to the third and final Pokemon if you're in singles battles. Randomly, it'll be either a Ho-Oh or a Lugia. The two big legendary birds, of course, Lugia being the master of the legendary bird trio, Ho-Oh being a recent channel mascot. However, if you choose double battles instead of singles, I'll be using a fourth team member, which, dependent on your starter, will be either Empoleon, Decidueye, or Blaziken. These are three bird starter Pokemon, then they'll rival the type of yours. If you chose a fire type, I'm using the water one. If you're choosing a, if you chose a grass type, I'm using the fire type. These bird Pokemon are all Pokemon that Bird Keeper Toby has acquired on his journey, which I'm going to tell you so much more about in the future. But when you defeat him, you are offered the place of being the frontier brain on the top of the battle tree if you so wish, or to journey off to future regions. Which again, is just more I'll talk about in the future. This was my battle frontier, these were my battle facilities, and this was my team. And I have much more to share with you as well as I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear what your battle facilities would be like. What would your battle frontiers be like? Would you have a whole island? Would you have one facility? Would you have three or five or six? What would your teams be and what would the themes be? Oh, I can't wait to read those comments or maybe even see your own videos on these things. Also, wow, massive thanks to Mouse Alchemist for making this just absolutely incredible graphic of the island. I think it's fantastic and links to her works will be below. Please Please check them out. The island looks absolutely stunning and is so much more than what I asked for, which is absolutely just an incredible artist at work. If you need something commissioned, I, I recommend you ask her. And uh, what kind of things are you looking forward to seeing next? I've got a few things in the works and I'm looking for this chronology to be complete by the beginning of next year, at least for now. But I got at least three more videos in this series, like what if I was a Pokemon professor or what, what, a number of other things that I'm working on relating to this, including more fake mon. And I just, I, I cannot wait. But I'm gonna have to, and so are you. So get right in the comments and saw hi, Pokemon Masters. A special thank you to my patrons of the month who allow me to make videos like this one. A special shout out to the big patrons of the month, Braylon and Andros Lee Fay, as well as the Pokey Myth, Dominic Widener. Thank you. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.